Hello, this is Tanya Chu. So in this video, I'm going to give you some guidance. I'm going to give you some guidelines in answering paper five, question number one. So for A-levels physics. So let's get started. So this is a format that's specially made. So please be reminded there is no format in paper five, question number one. So I purposely make this format so that it's easier for me to guide you and easier for you to refer to all the marks located for some criterion. So first one is about your labored diagram. So one mark will be given if you draw the diagram, but you have to make sure the diagram drawing are all labored. So even the apparatus that you draw, you must make sure that everything that you draw on the piece of paper must be labored. And variables here, we have three. So one is your independent variable. The other one is your dependent variable. And you have variables to be kept constant. Variables to be kept constant is there the physical quantities that you are supposed to make sure that it is constant throughout the whole experiments. So there will be two marks given for the variables. And the third one is your methods or your procedure in conducting the experiment. So first one, <laughs> So that is general, set out the apparatus as shown in the diagram, the labored diagram that you drew. And okay, these are some guidance here, some ideas on how are you supposed to write here. You might want to write on like how to measure your independent variable. And you might also want to talk about how to measure your dependent variable and or how to vary your independent variable. And the last step is normally you repeat the experiment with different values of your independent variables. So get, you get a variations of your dependent variables so that it's easier for you to plot the graph. So three marks will be given for the methods. And the next one will be your analysis. So an analysis is when you plot the graph. So you just need to tell us what graph is supposed to be plotted against which physical quantities. So if a straight line graph is obtained, which normally is a straight line graph. So whether it is passing through the origin. So when you get the question, so you try to modify the question, uh, modify the equation, and you need to check whether there is if there is no y-intercept, that means this is a straight line graph that passing through all region, then the relationship is valid. Or And the third mark could be mm, the gradient that, okay, you just tell us how are we supposed to determine the gradient from the graph that is plotted or y-intercept, etc. That will be three marks for analysis. And the last part is normally the hardest one. It is about their safety precautions as well as the additional details. So six marks, guys, will be given for that. So these are some ideas that you could write in your safety precautions and your additional details. Maybe you could talk about how are you supposed to make that variables constant throughout the whole experiment? Or how are you supposed to make sure your results are more reliable? So avoid parallax error maybe. So how are you supposed to avoid that parallax error? And um, limitations that you could encounter during the experiment and the suggestions in overcoming the limitations that could occur during the experiment. Yeah, so these are the format. So let us try with a past your question here. So I have a past your question here. So I'm going to discuss step by step in how to do this past your question here. So a student wishes to determine the young modulus E of a wood from the period of oscillation of a loaded wooden roll as shown in figure 1.1 here. An equation relating the period of oscillation t to the overhanging length of the roll is t squared equals kl cubed over e. So the constant k is given by that where m is the mass of the load, w is the width of the roll, and d is the thickness of the roll. So design a laboratory experiment to determine the young modulus of the wood, you should draw a diagram 
in the arrangement of your equipment, but most of the time you you are supposed to draw the diagram. So I will even suggest you to draw the diagram each and every time. So because the diagram will help you a lot. So sometimes you might not write it in a proper way that the examiner could not understand what, what are you writing. So the diagram will help the examiner in understanding what are what what were what what you wrote on the piece of paper so therefore i would suggest you to draw a labor diagram and um showing the arrangement of your equipment so in your account you should pay particular attention to the procedure to be followed the measurements to be taken the control variables how to analyze the data how to determine e the young modulus and the safety precautions to be taken so all together give you 15 marks here so i have already dropped my labor diagram you can see that i use a g clamp to clamp my two wooden blocks. so in between the two wooden blocks is actually the wooden roll that i want to determine its young modulus here so i use the two wooden blocks because i want to protect my wooden roll from being deformed so i might exert like some kind of force on the wooden rule that would deform it and it will affect my young modulus so therefore so i'm using the two wooden blocks here so and i have a bucket of sand please bear in mind that there's a bucket of sand there if i drew that okay that would be one of my safety precautions there so i might not have enough time yeah to finish my paper five question number one so if i drew this on the labor diagram. So even if I don't write it in the safety precaution, the examiner will still give him giving me mark for that precaution there because I drew in my labor diagram. So can you see how important the labor diagram is? So therefore, please make sure that you draw labor diagram each and every time. Yeah. So I have a hundred gram slotted mass here and L there, the the, the L here represents the length of the wooden rule, how it is measured from the end to the other end from the center of the 100 gram slotted mass there. So, so let us get started with our variables here. So the independent variable will be my, uh, bear in mind, this is the equation given. So when you draft it, yeah, when you draft it, you have to highlight something here because your quest is to determine the young modulus of the wood, which is E here. So at the end of the time, you still have to tell us how to determine the E. So therefore, I'm going to talk about my independent variable. So you can see that independent variable is a variable that is easily to manipulate, or it is sometimes called manipulated variable. So if it is easy to change, so that will be our independent variable. And the dependent variable is the one that depending on the one that we are changing. So I would say that my length, length of the wooden roll would be my independent variable. And the one that depends on the length will be the period of oscillation of the wooden roll here. So therefore my independent variable will be the length of wooden rule, which is L, and the dependent variable will be the period of oscillation, which is capital T there, and the variables to be kept constant. Can you see that is if the equation given is more complicated, you will have a lot to write for your variables to be kept constant here. So I have the weave of the row can be constant and the mass of the slotted mass or the load that I'm using should be constant the whole experiment and even the thickness of the rule can be constant as well. So I'm going to write three here. So the first one is the width of the rule. I'll just write W. I don't have to explain because the symbol, they have already, the question already explained the symbol. W means here, W is the width of the rule. So I'll just start W there. So W and I have a thickness of the rule, which is D. And of course, the mass of the slotted mass or the mass of load, yeah, which is 100 gram that I, I'm using here from the diagram that I drew here. So I'm done with my variables here and my methods. So the first method is always set up the apparatus as shown 
in the diagram. So, and okay, you have to tell us that since, okay, straight away when you talk about method, straight away we'll look at the independent variable. So how are you going to measure the independent variable? How am I going to measure the length of the middle rule? Very simple. So the length L of a uh, wooden roll, wooden roll is measured using a meter roll. So as simple as that. So I'm going to use my meter roll to measure the length of my wooden roll. And okay, the third ex the third one, okay, the third step could be um, the 100 gram slotted mass is placed at one end of a wooden roll and um, glued. So the fourth one, just to make sure that it's not dropping when the roll is oscillating, or you can use even blue tack to tack it on the wooden roll. Um, the fourth uh, methods. So the fourth methods are focused on my dependent variable. So how am I going to measure the period of, of um, oscillation? So I would say that this wooden roll is uh, set into maybe 20 oscillations and uh, time taken for 20 oscillations uh, and time taken for N20 oscillations is measured using a stopwatch. So I'm using a stopwatch to measure my 20 oscillation. So, and then, okay, I'm going to tell you how, because the dependent variable is actually our period of oscillation, but I'm using my stopwatch to measure 20 oscillations. So I'm going to explain how am I supposed to determine the period of oscillation. So the period of oscillation T would be time taken for 20 oscillations per the number of oscillations. So the number of oscillations is 20. So it is measured in second. So therefore, yeah. And I could also talk about um, number six. So um, I suppose to, okay. Mm, or I talk about, okay, the last part maybe. Experiment is repeated for different length or L and period are calculated. Yeah, that's the end of my methods here because methods, they only give you four marks for methods. So I write more than four. So then the next one would be the analysis. So I must have three points for analysis. So I go back to my graph here. So go back to my equation here. So since T square is given, so I'm going to plot uh, my T square against L cube here. So this will be my Y axis and this will be my X axis. See from the graph, uh, from the equation that I arrange in here, K over E would be the gradient of the graph. So Therefore, if I sub in here, so I'll just put K over E, L cube, and I will sub in A, K as well. So K is equal to 16 pi square M over W, D cube, L cube.
times, or oh, I forgot the times E, so that E will be my Young modulus. So you can see from here is that this is your Y axis, this is your X axis. Can you see that the whole thing here represents the gradient of the graph? So this graph, the one that you're supposed to plot has no Y intercept because there is no plus something there. So therefore, so analysis would be hmm, a graph of t square against l cube is plotted. And the second map will be given when you tell us that, okay, um, the relationship, relationship is valid if a straight line graph passing through origin. This is very important. You have to tell us because straight line graph doesn't mean that it has to pass through origin if it has y-intercept. But in our case here, there's no y-intercept. So therefore, we have to be more specific in telling the examiner that this graph is a straight line graph passing through origin. So the relationship is valid for straight line graph passing through origin is obtained. So then after that, what is the gradient of the graph and tell us because our quest here is to determine the how are we supposed to determine E, which is the young modulus here. So therefore, um, the gradient of the graph, the gradient of graph, which is equal to 16 pi square M over W D cube E. So therefore, E is equal to 16 pi square M over W D cube times the gradient of the graph, the gradient of the graph. So ta -da, there's a three marks for analysis. So make sure that you score all the three marks because for analysis part, the three marks are very, very easy to score. So then the last part here, which is the most hated part here. So it's, it's about our safety precaution and the additional details. So the first safety precaution is, of course, I prepare a bucket of is place underneath the uh, slotted mass. And okay, so I also have my safety precautions here. One of the safety precautions is 20 or uh, this is a more additional detail, 20 oscillations are taken. Why do I take 20 oscillations of the wooden rule instead of just one oscillation and call that the period? So I don't do that because when you set the wooden rule to oscillate, so normally the first oscillation is with a lot of air resistance there. So therefore we take more oscillation, maybe 20 oscillation first, okay? Or you, before you stop your stopwatch, you have to make sure that the rule or the wooden rule has already oscillate for two or three complete oscillation before you start your stopwatch. So to make sure that your result is more reliable, we normally do that. So 20 oscillations are taken to, reduce the percentage error of the period. So, and the third one may be um, the measurement of D and W because D and W are the variables to be kept constant. So I have to make sure that there are constants. So D and W uh, are taken along the meter, uh, I mean the wooden rule by using vernier calipers. 
And number four, maybe you want to write that, okay, when you set the meter roll to oscillate, we normally, our angle of oscillation is made to be very, very small because based on the equation given, there is no angle involved. That means if the angle is small, you can just ignore the angle of oscillation. So therefore, the angle of oscillation must be set to be very, very small. The angle of oscillation is less than maybe 15 degree to ensure the equation is valid and okay number five you might want to say that um the slotted okay this the fifth details actually was written in the procedure but i can repeat it but my advice is if you don't have time you need not have to repeat because the examiner will always find some points for you so even though you wrote it in the methods it doesn't matter so the slotted mass is stick to the wooden roll by using glue we don't use tape because tape will add additional mass there so therefore i have five here and uh, the six is that when you modify the equation and when you tell us how the e is determined that will also give you one mark here yeah so and you also tell us how are we supposed to uh, repeat the experiment that is also one mark there and then okay maybe the sixth one you could say that okay experiment for the same length is repeated and time taken for 20 oscillations is average so we normally repeat like two times and we find the average to make sure that our results are more reliable here so tara there are the six uh, points there for safety precautions as well as additional details here so that's the end of our discussion for uh, paper five question number one i do really by this this discussion really help you in uh, your practicing your in practicing your paper five so wish you all the best and do subscribe to my youtube channel for more exciting videos and i thank you very much um, and do comment about this video if you have any problem that you face feel free to give me some comments so i thank you for listening and thank you for your attention and do subscribe to my youtube channel and thank you very much bye see you again